Hello, friends. It is Tech Sags Rewind presented by Yeti, and I found out today that Matt Browning has the cleanest car in the Bryan College Station area. I really do. He's part of the fan show. Kelly Adams is as well. Blake Chilton's with us, the MMA expert here on the program. Let's get into it, guys. Um, you listened to part of the show, I assume. What was mm -hmm. your favorite part of the show today? Uh, outside of us? Well, maybe it is you. Swope and McGee. Swope and McGee. Those guys yeah, are right? great. Swope and McGee are wonderful. Aaron Torres is always great. But, I mean, we're the best-looking crew going, so... Well, Keep it OB. OB is pretty good, too. OB makes me laugh, OB, man. OB's funny. Blake, any part that you really liked about the show? I mean, obviously, the analysis that took place in here from real true it. You true guys are analysts. like Mel Kuyper, right? True analysts. That's right. Real, like Tower Mel Kuyper, the year that he thought, didn't he think Ryan Leaf should go above Peyton Manning? That's, he did. That, yes, he that, did. That's who you guys are. All right, we did the go hour, as we always do. OB was great. We did McGee and Swope. Those guys together, even better. Uh, Aaron Torres and these gentlemen. We call it the fan show. It's next here on Tech Sacks Rewind. Uh, five, I put Drake May, uh, North Carolina quarterback. He's spectacular. He's a, uh, got that ability to throw and run. Maybe the best uh, dual threat in the country. But his team was only nine and five last year, or, the, yep. or, or something like that. Are they going to be? Are they going to be uh, significantly better? Now he did. He had five thousand one hundred nine yards of total offense last year. I think that led the country. But if his team's not better, that's going to keep him down. But I'm going to, I'm going to. Uh, keep him on not only on my radar but on my list well he's expected to be a top 10 nfl pick yes uh the one or two when it comes to quarterbacks taken um obviously caleb williams is probably number one there what happens if spencer rattler has a phenomenal game south carolina beats north Car carolina does that put spencer rattler potentially on your list or no he's still got to do more uh no i think uh depending on how good you said spectacular yeah. and what other guys do you know, I think Ben Rattler has to be one of those guys you uh, you consider. Number four. Uh, Sam Hartman, the Notre Dame quarterback. Now, uh, uh, what was it last year? He threw for 3,701 yards and 38 touchdowns at Wake Forest. I don't know about you, but I'm pretty sure he's going to have better talent to work with yes. at Notre Dame. Uh, he had 251 passing yards and four touchdowns last week against, you know, Navy. Um, but you're supposed to. If you're playing a lesser opponent, you're supposed to wear them out, and he did. I think, and plus, he's Notre Dame quarterback, and if you're a Notre Dame player, especially a quarterback, you always get a bump from the media. Yeah, you do. Let's go to number three, a guy that uh, I mean, that backfield, that team, they're, they're, they might win it all. I, in fact, I, I think I might have Michigan winning it all, which would be. Uh, and then what? What did I see? I saw somebody say something that I had actually said on the show before. I could see Michigan winning winning it all, and then Jim Harbaugh saying, "I'm out." Hmm. But anyway, go ahead. Uh, Blake Corum, the running back from uh, Michigan, you know, he th rushed for 1,463 yards and 18 touchdowns last year, despite essentially missing three games. Yep. So we'll start off with this weekend. And A&M could be your focus. You can pick whatever. Who's going to get it done? Ooh. Nye Smith. A Nye Smith going to get it done. His yeah. game back. All right. Oh, yeah. Well, I think a nice is going to have a big day. A couple touchdowns. A couple touchdowns. I don't know. Eight catches, 120 yards, two TDs. Okay. I, yeah. I'd, I'd love to see that. Yeah, I would love to see it. Steven? I would love to see this defensive line get it done. Yes. Oh. Uh, it's hard to have a good defense without a really, really good D, D line. I'm curious to see, is it Fidel Diggs? Who, who takes the charge at defensive end that can consistently get after the quarterback? 100%. Who's not going to get it done? Remember, it doesn't have to be an Aggie. It could be anywhere in college football. <laughs> yeah, I'll let you. Justin Thomas in the Ryder Cup. Did you see that pick? Yeah. That's not getting it done. That was a, hey, you cannot leave Justin Thomas at home, man. Really? You're going JT? Yeah. Oh, yeah, man, you can't leave that guy. He's 15 and four. Uh, That's, you can't leave. Maybe that was a bad take. <laughs> no, that got <laughs> you out of it. Uh, are you guys. I like that. I like JT. That was a good. Oh, I could see. Who would you take, man? Lucas Glover. He had a great he year. He did. Uh, did Keegan? Keegan. Keegan. Got left Keegan at home. Yeah, he kind of got screwed. Um, Those two, and then Finau maybe got screwed, but yeah. Anyways. Oh, Bryson. He shot know? a fifty-eight. I did see that. That is filthy. Yeah. But those guys don't want him in the locker room. That's true. <laughs> Here's one. Does Bama get it done this year with their questions at quarterback? No. Not to Bama's level. Nah, get, well, what's getting it done? To me, getting back into the playoffs. Oh. The final four? Yeah. Are you go are you taking them? I'll take Bama every year, man. Even though they have questions at QB. Yeah. They can run the football. Yeah. It doesn't matter. 
I'll take Bama. I, they're just too good year in, year out, defensively. They're, too, they're coached well. I mean, that just, quarterback was brutal against us. That was the worst Alabama quarterback I've ever seen them trot out in a football game. In, that's true. Since what was the last coach before Saban? Uh, oh. Mike, Mike, Mike uh, Shula. Shula, yeah. yeah. Like it was like that era quarterback play. Yeah. Do you remember that game? It was like Mike Shula? No, uh, Jalen Elro was yeah. No. Oh, you talking yeah. about last year? Yeah, yeah, he had the four Ath- turnovers. Athletic and, kid, but yeah, tough man. I we should have won. But typical Alabama, that kid's gonna come back and win the Heisman. Yeah, of course. Right? Yeah, that's how. All right, that's so and I, and I got a um, um, I guess I'm going somewhere with this. Does LSU get it done this year? Oh, ooh, God, I don't know. God. Florida State. I don't think LSU. Florida gets, State's favored, right? Yeah, I'll, I'll take. I think Florida State's gonna be pretty good. Okay, so. Who doesn't get it done? I'm going to go LSU. Yeah, I love that. I hope well, it happened. The new wrinkles, what it looks like, what Jimbo looks like on the sidelines, what Connor looks like, the whole thing put together against New Mexico. Oh, I'm, I'm really excited. And obviously, everybody that listens to my, my visits with you, I, I've been a little bit, you know, I, I, what's interesting, David, is I think a lot of the national media has kind of come full circle where, over the last couple of weeks, as, as the dust has settled, you get away from SEC media days, I have seen a lot of people say, you know what, I think this team has the potential to be better than people are giving them credit for. And so to directly answer your question, I'm excited. And I'm excited because, and I, I've said this a million times, I'm not an X's and O's guy, but as I've said, as J- Bobby Petrino has said, his job is to make Jimbo's life easier, Connor Wegman's life easier, and to get the ball in the hands of the playmakers. And so – I'm not anti-Jimbo like a lot of people in the media, but you, you watch that offense, and again, me not being an X to the nose guru, it felt complicated. You saw the huge play sheet. You saw, you know, previous quarterbacks kind of looking at the card on their wrist and thinking and overthinking and all that stuff. And I'm excited to see, one, how it all looks, but two, is there a simplicity to it? Because sometimes, you know, in sports, if you're not thinking, you're just reacting and playing. And when you have the caliber of player that A&M has, that's exactly what you want, not only your quarterback, but your skill position guys to be doing as well. So, especially answer your question, it is one of the many, many, many things I'm excited about. And although it's obviously not the most high-profile game, it is one of the things that I'm most eager to see. I'll tell you real quick. I want to see 30 points in the first half. That's what I want to see. I think we all want to see it, but I think it's doable and possible and it sends a message. But let's try to keep it on the realistic side. What do you realistically want to see? I want to see us put up 50 points, and I want to see us hold them to one score. That could be a touchdown or one field goal. Like, I'm not going to get picky on that. But I want to see the, def- the offense and the defense dominate a team that was 2-10 and 10 and is there traditionally 2-10. and 10. Uh, I want to see us absolutely dominate on both sides of the ball. Okay. And we'll do that early. Like, I'm not going to say I need 30 in the first half or anything. But we're not going to score 50 unless we have 30 in the first half. I want to preface this because I'm going to follow up with what do you expect to see in a moment. So what do you well, want I to could, see versus I to could, expect? You want me to go and tell you that too? <clears throat> uh, we'll get to that. Okay. All right? we'll, sure. we'll get to sure. I want you to think about it, right? Because you, you're just blurting stuff out. I yeah, want you to I'm really ready. just – It's football season. Marinate. Blake, what do you want to see? This is graphic, but I want to see a lot of making out. In the stands. Oh, I like it. Kyle Field style. Let's yeah. go. I, I, never I see. I've never complained about making out. He's the pastor, too, on the show. Just let y'all know that. I want to see I want to see us put up 50 points. I, I want Wigman to play two and a half quarters. We start moving some other people in, yep. getting some other people time, um, and just see what a lot of these young guys can do and give them some game experience in, in the friendly confines of Kyle Field. Uh, I want to see complete annihilation. I'd annihilation. love to see 50 points. And like like Kelly said, I mean, a field goal, we give up a field goal, we give up a touchdown. I mean, something's going to happen. Yeah. There's going to be a, something bad. Some kind happen. of breakdown, nice whatever. Turn, turnover, they get short field. Yeah. We'll give them one. It's fine. Somebody posted on, on, the, on the forums a little while ago about the Andy Staples show. He, he, did a, he did an interview with the guy from On3. I can't remember that guy's J. name. J.D. Pickell. Yeah, Pickell. Yeah, that yeah. guy. So and their premise was disasters, right? He said, you know, you're so positive. He said, tell us about a disaster. And he, and he gave him three options. And he yep. said, well, the first disaster I came up with, he actually mentioned Texags more than once. They okay. both did. Good they advertising. Said, they did. They, they, right. were, they, were, they were blasting for Texags. But he goes, if A&M scores, plays New Mexico and scores 24 points, and they, they win 24 to three, he said, Texags will melt down. 
He said, if they don't score at least 30 points, Texags will, the servers might explode. All right, Blake, tell them what to do. Like, share, and subscribe. Why are you telling me? Tell them. Like, share, and subscribe. And comment. And say it this time with conviction. Like, mm. like, share, and subscribe. You broke the table. There you go. All right, thanks, guys. We'll see you next time.